Hi everyone, welcome to our basic investing seminar called Building Wealth Through the Stock Market. I'm Dane Slingat and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. So before we start, I'd like to introduce Call Financial. We are the largest and leading online stock brokerage in the Philippines. It is our core belief that every Filipino deserves to be rich. This is why we're bringing our free investing seminars to Filipinos globally. So just a few reminders bago po tayo magsimula. Kailangan po natin ng at least 1 Mbps internet speed para tuloy-tuloy yung pagnood natin ng webinar. Uh, iwasan din po natin magbukas ng mga apps or windows para hindi bumagal yung connection natin. And nakamute po ang audience for this webinar. Kung may mga tanong kayo during the webinar, you can go to the questions tab and type your inquiries there. We will answer all of your questions at the end of our session. Okay, so without further ado, let's welcome our speaker for today's webinar. She started as a management associate with the Philam group of companies before becoming a corporate trainer and development officer. She joined Call Financial in 2010 as a sales manager and has since then handled the sales and customer support teams. She is a certified securities representative, certified investment solicitor, and is a fellow in the Life Management Institute with honors. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Ms. Joyce Chan. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Joyce Chan at ako po ang speaker ninyo for this seminar called Building Wealth Through the Stock Market. So dito po, excited po talaga ako to discuss this with you kasi ang i-discuss po natin is how we're gonna build our wealth and how we're gonna do it through the stock market. So unahin po natin ang ating building wealth part. Para po makabuild ng wealth, meron po tayong formula dito at itong formula ay is a three-step process. This three-step process is learning how to save, investing your savings, at to be consistent with our investment. So three steps process po yan para sa ating financial security. Most of the time, or ating mga teachers or ating mga parents, ang lagi po tinuturo sa atin is how to save. Ito po, sa unang step po tayo, ang madalas na nagsisimula. Then, para po talaga lumago ang ating pera, kailangan po natin pumunta sa second at sa third step. Kasi ngayon, papakita ko po sa inyo ano po talaga yung difference between each of these steps in terms of money. So, here, kung nagsisave po tayo, usually nilalagay po natin to sa banko. Ang banko po ngayon, nakakapagbigay po yan ng usually mga about 0.5% to about 1% in interest rate in return. So kung nagsisave po tayo at meron tayong 60,000 to begin with, pag pinasok po natin yan sa banko with a 1% interest rate every year, in 5 years makakakuha po tayo ng 63,000, 10 years 66, and in 60 years 109,000. Ngayon, ang usually tinatanong ko dito is that willing ba tayo mag-wait ng ganitong panahon para sa ganitong amount? Yan. So here, makikita ho natin na kung in-invest ho natin pag pumunta tayo sa second step and let's say nag-invest po tayo to a product na nagbibigay ng 9% return every year, ito po ang kalalabasan ng same 60,000 na inilagay ho natin sa banko. Yung 60,000 na ito in 5 years, magiging 92,000, 10 years, 142, and in 60 years, 10.5 million. So mas maganda po talaga ang return with a 9% return every year a difference of 8% sa banko, pero makikita ko natin, over time, hindi na po 8% yung difference. Lumalaki po siya ng lumalaki kasi kung ano po yung na-earn natin, ipinapasok ko natin yan ulit. And then yung final step natin, which is the third step, to invest regularly. So dito, in the same investment po tayo, and then 60,000 tayo in the first year, ang difference lang po is that every year, magdadagdag tayo ng additional 60,000. 
ito po yung investing consistently. At ito po ang kalalabasan niyan. So in five years, kung every year po tayo naglalagay ng 60,000 sa 9% investment, meron po tayong 468 kaagad nung, ng unang five years. And in 60 years, 132 million. So dito, pag tinanong ho natin, is this worth the wait? Yan. Ito po ang ganda po talaga ng return niya in 60 years. At ito po ay masayang hintayin kasi alam po natin malaki ang return natin sa ating third step. So dito po, i-discuss ko po ang second and ang third step kung paano tayo mag invest at paano natin to gagawin consistently. Here in COL Financial, we recommend that you invest sa stock market. Now, ang stock market po, meron lang po siya isa sa Philippines at ang tawag dito ay the Philippine Stock Exchange. Ito po yung central market natin. Na bago po tayo pumunta sa stock market, pag-usapan po natin ang stocks muna. So ano po ba tong stocks or shares na lagi po natin pinag-uusapan? Stocks or shares, this represents an ownership to a company. So if a company is like a hundred piece jigsaw puzzle, one piece of that puzzle is a stock or a share. So kung bumili po kayo one stock of BDO, pwede po kayo pumunta sa BDO bank branch and then tanungin po sa teller kung kamusta na ang business natin. Kasi you are a co-owner or a co-shareholder of that company. Now, lahat po ng shares, pwede lang po siya bilhin at ibenta dito po sa Philippine Stock Exchange. etong mga company na kailangan po ng additional funding, they register themselves with the PSE. And then what the PSE does is that they connect them to investors such as ourselves na meron po tayong savings na gusto po natin palakihin palalo. So investors, bibili po tayo ng shares. And what the company does is that they use the money to make their company bigger and better. And in return, they will give the money back to the investors in two ways. One is through price appreciation and the other through dividends. Now let's talk about price appreciation first. So price appreciation basically means that we're going to buy something low and sell it later at a higher price. Now, paano po gumagalaw ang presyo sa stock market? Gumagalaw po siya katulad ng any commodities po na meron po tayo sa market. For example, ang commodity, to, ang commodity natin dito ay isang kilong bigas. And itong kilong bigas, usually dito sa Philippines ngayon, ma roughly nasa 50 peso siya to 60 peso isang kilo. Ngayon, marami po pwede mangyari sa ating bansa na meron po tayong mga katulad ng shortage of rice. Pwede rin ho. Pwede rin na nag import na tayo sa iba't ibang bansa. Pwede rin na dumadami ang tao sa Philippines. Or alam din po natin na mas kinagano siya kasarap. Alam din po natin na nakaka-gain din po ng weight kung marami tayong kinakain na kanin. So with all these that is happening around us, this all affects the price of the commodity. Some of them would be good for the price of the commodity and some would mean that it's bad. So here, there are two things that will affect the price of this commodity, supply and demand. So kung mas marami po ang supply, mas bumababa ang presyo. Pero kung mas marami po ang demand, mas umaakyat po yan. Katulad din po yan sa stock ng isang company, na kung ito po ay isang construction company at ito, ito yung mga apat na scenarios na pwede mangyari sa kanya, each of this scenario would actually affect the supply and demand for this stock. Kaya po, based on each of this scenario, it will affect the stock price whether it will go up or down. So kung nanalo po siya ng government bid, aakyat po yung presyo niyan kasi maraming gustong bumili. Pero, pag ang presyo ho ng mga cement or ng mga kanyang kailangan bilhin ay umaakyat din, bababa naman ang presyo niya kasi masyado marami ang expenses ho niya. So ganito din po ang stock, lagi po siyang umaakyat at bumababa every day within the market. And here, para kumita tayo sa price appreciation, we have to buy a stock na sa tingin natin aakyat ang presyo niya over time. So ang gusto po natin ay isang stock na magiging in-demand over the next few years. Now, the second way to earn money is through dividends. Now, dividends are extra earnings that the companies have that they like to give to their shareholders. Now, usually, ang mga companies, nag-a-announce po sila ng dividend 
katulad ng, let's say, uh, this company would give one peso for every one share that you have. And therefore, if you have a thousand shares, magbibigay po sila ng one thousand peso sa inyo. Meron lang po tayong withholding tax of 10%. So, ang makukuha nyo neto dyan is about 900 pesos. Ngayon, every company would also give out dates such as X dates, record dates, and payable dates. So, here, gusto ko po sana na maglabas lang po ng isang poll para sa ating mga listeners and to our attendees na usually po itong mga company, nag-release sila ng mga X dates, payable dates or record dates, pero kailan po kayo magiging entitled to this dividend? So, here is our first poll. So, if a company would give a dividend with an X date of July 3 and a payable date of July 27, kailan nyo dapat meron kayo or binili yung shares na yan? When should you have had the share para makakuha kayo ng dividend? Yan. So, just click an answer and then click the submit button para po uh, mapasok po yung answers ninyo sa ating poll na ito. Okay? Ayan. So, makikita natin ang choices po natin dito ay July 2, July 3, July 27, at July 28. Okay. So, let us see kung ano po ang mga sagot ng ating attendees. <clears throat> so, 57% said that you should have bought the shares in July 2 or had the shares in July 2 para po makakuha ng dividends. Yung iba po, medyo equally scattered po sila sa July 3. Sa 27 at sa 28. At ang sagot po sa itong poll na ito or sa, sa itong question na ito is that para makuha mo yung dividendo, you should have it the day before the X date. So the X date po kasi, what it stands for is that it's called an expiry date. So the expiry date of a stock which means na sa itong araw na to and onwards, wala na po kayong dividend. So, congratulations kay July 2. Makakakuha po kayo ng dividendo kung meron po kayo shares at that time. And then July 3, pwede nyo po siya ibenta and you will still get the dividends. The payable date is when a shareholder naman would receive the dividend. So, kung meron po kayong COL account, automatic po namin yan ikinikredit sa inyong account. So, at least convenient na po yan para ma-receive ninyo yung dividends. Hey, so please remember this, very important po sa ating expiration date kasi po uh, marami na rin pong customers nagtatanong po sa amin na uh, saan na po yung dividendo nila and only for us to find out that they had bought it on the X date or after. Kaya here, just remember, have it the day before. Okay, so thank you for participating in that poll. Ngayon po, i-discuss ho natin na bakit po ang stocks ang inire-recommend ni COL Financial. Now, stocks po nire-recommend namin because I'd like to show you this stat. Etong study po na ito ay 10-year, this is an average 10-year return of the stock market, of the time deposits, and of savings account. So this is from the end of 2018. So this is 2008 to 2018. The stock market here is actually the Philippine Stock Exchange Index. So pag sinabi po nating index, the stock market would choose 30 of the biggest, most traded stocks, put them together, and they will represent the stock market here in the Philippines. The last 10 years, average return po niya ay 9% every year. So, may mga years negative 5, may mga years positive 20. Pag in-average ho natin yan, 9% ho yan every year. Si time deposit, 2.4%. Si savings account po, 0.5%. What's interesting about this study is the red line here, which is our inflation rate. In the last 10 years, average inflation rate po natin sa Philippines ay 3.7%. So that means yung mga bilihin or goods, the cost of goods and services, umaakyat ang presyo niya every year about 3.7%. So para po tayo kumita o para magkaroon po tayo ng buying power, kailangan ang pera din natin, nag-grow din siya more than 3.7%. Para po kung ano gusto natin bilhin ngayon, mabibili pa rin ho natin siya the next year. Okay, so now if we will be investing in the stock market, meron lang po tayong mga guidelines to make sure that 
we come out of this better and richer than ever. Ang ating guidelines po ay invest for the long term, invest in quality businesses at reasonable prices, invest by diversifying, and then invest use regularly using a plan. So let us discuss each and every one of these guidelines. So we will start with investing for the long term. Okay. So usually, ang tanong po sa akin ng mga participants or in other seminars that I've been to, usually tinatanong po yan is, how long is long term? Ayan. So may nagtanong na rin sa akin, is six months long term? So para sa akin, ang long term po ay, kung three years kayo mag invest pwedeng-pwede na. Five years, much better. And in 10 years, it's way better. So the longer the better po talaga ang pag invest sa stock market dahil po sa ito. This is the Philippine Stock Exchange Index. Again, 30 of the biggest, most traded companies. And this is how they had performed in the last uh, decades. So this is from 1987 all the way to 2018. At makikita po natin na ang stock market, hindi po siya gumagalaw in a linear fashion going up, but rather up, down, and up, down po siya para pong roller coaster. And like any roller coaster, this would also give you a roller coaster of emotions. So what do I mean by that? Pag umaakyat po ang stock market, usually mga investors, they feel very happy. They feel excited, and the tendency is they like to buy more. So mga investors po usually bumibili sila dito kung kailan po mataas ang stock market kasi nakikita nila kaagad na may return ang kanilang investment. Pero pag bumababa po ang stock market, dito po natatakot or nagpapanik ang ating mga investors at dito po sila may tendency magbenta. Kaya po bumababa ang stock market. Pero kung bumili naman, kung bumibili tayo ng mataas na presyo at nagbebenta kung mababa, hindi tayo kikita rito. So here, investing for the long term will help you manage your emotions para hindi tayo mapadala sa ating emotions and to buy when we're happy and sell when we're afraid. But rather, here, think of it as whatever you invest in, this is for long term. So kung bumili po kayo at mataas ang presyo, huwag mag-alala, isipin nyo lang po, pang long term ito, pang long term ito. Pag bumaba ang presyo, huwag matakot. Pikit lang po kayo ng mata at sabihin nyo, pang long term ito, pang long term ito. Dahil po, sa dulo nito, makikita nyo pag umakyat po ang stock market, sino po ang mga naghihintay? Hindi nagbenta nung natakot sila, kikita ko sila dito. Ayan. So here, I'll give an example here. I remember that in 2010, Ayan, around this time, in 2010, there's this company called Ayala Land. I remember this company because this company used to be 9 pesos per share in 2010. Today, Ayala Land is now doing about 50 pesos per share. That is in 2019. So, kung meron po kayo binili na shares noong 2010 at ibinenta nyo siya ngayon, you would have gotten 41 pesos in profit for every share that you have. At that happened not in one year, not in two years, but that happened in nine years. So here, investing for the long term, you also allow companies to grow your money because companies do not grow in one to two years. They need time to also grow and to give value back to its investors. So, alahanin po natin, ang una po nating guideline ay to invest for the long term. Okay. Now, let's go to the second guideline. At ang second guideline natin is to invest in quality businesses at reasonable prices. Okay. Here, to invest in quality businesses, meron po tayong limang criteria para alam po natin kung maganda po ang kumpanya. This five criteria has an acronym called GEMS, G-E-M-S-S. -S. Ito po yung criteria na ng ating research team na sinabi ho nila kung nakapasa daw dito sa limang to, magandang kompanya ito. What's the five? This is a growing industry po yung kompanya. Nag-earn ho siya, nag-grow rin po yun. 
has management credibility, superior products and services, and has a strong balance sheet. So pag sinabi ho natin strong balance sheet, this means that uh, mas marami po silang assets than liabilities at yung mga assets nila, kaya ho nilang ipa-operate ang kanilang company in the long term. So dito po, mahalaga ho dito ang ating research. Okay, kung nakabukas po kayo ng COL account, for every type of COL account, meron tayong tinatawag na research portion. What I'd like to do is that para malaman ko kung itong company has the five criterias, I go to the research tab, I go to the archives. Here, fini-filter ko po yan, pinapasok ko anong stock ang gusto ko makita, at dito ko malalaman kung ano nangyayari sa kanila. Whether they're doing well, they're earning, they're growing, or they have accumulate more assets over the long term. Dito ko rin nakikita ko ano ang mga proyekto nila. Like itong mga tatlong na in-encircle ko, for example, here sa top research ho natin, nakasulat dito MPI, this is Metro Pacific Investment. Sabi ho dito that hospital business sale could be the key catalyst for MPI. So just a background, itong MPI na po ito, it's a money pangilinan company who owns hospital tollways, um, they also own Maynilad, and they have a lot of businesses inside this company. Now, ang sabi po na itong MPI is that ibebenta nila a portion of their hospital business so that they can have more money to build more roads and tollways here in the Philippines. Now, based on our research, they said that if they were able to sell this hospital business, maganda po to para sa MPI na company. At malalaman ko po yan Dahil sa ating research tab. So para sa akin, para makita nyo po kung maganda tong company, just go through the research. Free po ito sa ating COL account at madali lang po siyang basahin kasi mga 1 to 2 pages lang itong mga report na ito. So wag po tayo pipili ng company na hindi natin alam. Mas maganda talaga na pumili tayo ng company na alam natin at saan nila ginagamit ang pera natin at kung paano nila pinapatakbo ang business nila. Minsan meron po ako mga kliyente na tatawag sa amin na nagpapatulong kung ano po ang gagawin nila sa mga stocks na naibili na nila pero hindi masyado kumikita. And usually nakikita ko na marami pong mga companies na nandoon na hindi ako masyado familiar with. So lagi ko tinatanong yan sa kliyente na saan niyo po ba naririnig, saan niyo po ba naririnig itong mga companies or meron po ba nag-recommend sa inyo ng itong companies na ito? Most of the time, these clients, hindi po nila alam kung ano yung mga company na yon. Usually, they just follow a recommendation from what they hear or what they see. So for me, kung may nag-recommend po sa inyo, please check the research. Para, para i-check nyo lang po kung tama po na maganda tong company na to. Kasi hard-earned money po natin ang inilalagay natin sa mga businesses na ito. Okay. Now, the second part of this one is aside from buying quality businesses, it has to be in reasonable prices. Okay. So, ano ibig sabihin natin ng reasonable price? For example, meron po tayong tatlong company dito. And then, one of them is company GHI doing 10 pesos per share. Second company is doing 100 pesos per share. And the third company is 48 pesos per share. So ngayon, maglalabas po ako ng poll po ulit para sa ating mga attendees for this webinar. Now, if you were an uh, if you were an investor, if you have these companies as your choices for investment, which company would you choose to invest in? Ayan. So here, meron po tayo again three choices. First company is 10 pesos per share. Second company is 100 pesos per share. And the third company is 48 pesos per share. Okay. Pili lang po kayo anong company ang sa tingin nyo na gusto ninyo to invest in. And then let's see the result of this poll. 
Okay. So from what I can see, 66% po na ating attendees ay gusto bilhin si 10 pesos per share na company. While there's 14% na 100 pesos ang bibili nila and there's a 20% na 48 pesos ang bibili nila. Now, before I show what is actually the correct company here, I just want to show first na for every business, meron din po tayong tinatawag na fair value. Okay, so fair value is the best way I can say it is that this is when a researcher would study a company and come out with a price that they think the company is worth. For me, medyo parehas po siya sa SRP or suggested retail price. For example, meron po tayo isang Corneto drumstick. And dito sa Philippines, ang kanyang suggested retail price is 25 pesos per drumstick. Ngayon, pumunta po tayo sa store at ibinibenta siya for 30 pesos per drumstick. Dito, looking at the SRP price, makikita natin na itong Corneto drumstick ay mahal at 30 pesos. Dapat binibili natin siya ng 25 pesos or lower kasi ito po yung suggested retail price. But what if somebody offered you a Magnum ice cream that is also selling at 30 pesos per stick? Now, Looking at both, would you buy a Corneto drumstick or would you buy a Magnum stick at 30 pesos? Same ice cream, same, same flavor, pero perehas din po ang presyo niya. But how come? Mas marami pong tao magsasabi na gusto nila bilhin ang Magnum ice cream kaysa si Corneto drumstick. Ito po dahil sa SRP po ni Magnum ay nasa 60 pesos per stick. So knowing that po, Makikita ho natin na si Magnum Ice Cream at 30 pesos, mura ho siya. Pero si Corneto Ice Cream at 30 pesos, mahal siya. Kasi alam po natin yung SRP price. Ngayon, balik po tayo kanina sa tatlong companies kanina. Si 10 pesos, si 100 at si 48. At ito po, papakita ko sa inyo ang fair value ho nila. So marami po sa atin gusto talaga bumili ng 10 pesos. Kasi pag tinitignan natin yung presyo ng stock at 10 peso, isipin natin mura yan o okay kayan bilhin yan. Kaso kailangan po natin sila i-compare sa kanilang fair value para masabi po talaga natin kung mura siya o hindi. So si 10 peso company may fair value na 5 pesos and 50, share, uh, 50 cents per share. So at 10 pesos, mahal pa po tong company na ito. For those who said na 100 peso ang bibili nila, Makikita natin dito na ang fair value niya ay 80 pesos per share. Si 100 pesos, mahal pa rin ho siya. And for those who answered na 48 pesos per share ang company na bibili nila with a fair value of 60 pesos and 50 cents, masasabi na natin na mura na si 48 at ito ang maganda bilhin ngayon. So for the other two company, we would want their share prices to go down further para masabi natin na maibili natin sila at reasonable prices. Pero para sa itong poll na ito, sa itong scenario, maganda po bilhin si company na 48 pesos per share with a fair value of 60 pesos and 50 cents. Okay. So thank you again for answering that poll that we have. Okay. So how do we know the fair values of this company? Again, in your COL account, meron tayong tinatawag na investment guide. We study these companies and we come out with fair values for them. So that would be this column called COLFV. Yan, ito po ang ating fair value. At dahil sa fair value, meron po tayong rating kaagad na ibinibigay if we compare it to the current price of these companies. So kung mas mataas po ang presyo compared sa fair value, naglalagay po kami dyan ng hold rating po muna kasi we would rather buy it at a lower price which is this buy below price. So hintay-hintay lang po muna. For the rest, makikita po natin na mura po sila compared to its fair value. That's why it's nice to buy them. Okay. So here, fair values, we update them about every week so that at least nare-review po talaga na ating researchers kung kailangan po kami magpalit ng fair value. Okay, so papunta na po tayo sa third guideline natin, which is to diversify. Kung magda-diversify po tayo, okay, 
ang maganda ho dito is that yung pera ho natin, hindi natin lahat ilalagay sa isang company lang. Maganda sa iba't ibang companies at maganda rin po sa iba't ibang industries. So, usually po tinatanong sa akin is, how many companies should I buy to be considered diversified? Now, for me, it actually depends on your budget. Kung maliit lang po ang budget ninyo, mga 2 to 3 companies should be okay. Pag mas malaki, 5 to 6. For me, nahihirapan na po ako more than 6 kasi gusto ko sana kasi bantayan at basahin yung mga research ng mga companies na binibili ko. So kung more than 6 ho yan, baka masyado na po tayong busy para bantayan itong mga investments natin. So for maganda na po yung 5 to 6. So what you can do is that you can spread it across different industries as well. So wag po kayo bibili ng lahat ng banko, lahat ng real estate. Maganda is you can get one bank, one real estate, pwede rin po one services, and one power company. So that is how we diversify. Na pag hindi po kayo sigurado on what stock to buy, meron din pong produkto ang COL Financial that you can buy all in one go at marami na po itong laman. And this is called a mutual fund. Mutual fund is a professionally managed fund that is pulled together and invested in various assets. So here, itong mutual fund, meron po tayong tinatawag na fund managers na ipupul nila yung lahat ng pera ng investors at ibibili nila ng maraming iba't ibang klaseng investment. But you don't need to buy each and every one. Just buy one product, marami na po siyang laman sa loob. The best way I can describe a mutual fund is like a can of fruit cocktail. Kung gumagawa tayo ng fruit salad, hindi po tayo bumibili isa-isa na itong mga prutas na kailangan natin para gumawa nitong salad. We usually buy one can of fruit cocktail kasi marami na po nakahalo sa loob. At ang maganda dito is that itong can ng fruit cocktail comes in an affordable price. Now, here in mutual fund, even Warren Buffett, which is a famous investor, he said, by periodically investing in an index fund, the know-nothing investor can actually outperform most investment professionals. So here, ang nire-recommend po niya out of all the mutual funds is an index fund. So again, ito po yung word, index. Narinig na ho natin yan when we mentioned the Philippine Stock Exchange Index in which it is composed of 30 of the biggest, most traded companies. Put them together and it represents the stock market here in the Philippines. So you can actually buy all 30 of this in one mutual fund. And that mutual fund is called an equity index fund. Now, itong equity index sa inyong COL account, meron po kayong apat to choose from. The first one is being managed by Philam Asset Management. The second one is being managed by Phil Equity. The third one is being managed by BPI Asset Management. So this is called the Philippine Stock Index Fund. And the last one is being managed by Sun Life. But all of them are invested in the same equity index fund, which is the 30 biggest, most traded companies here in the Philippines. Ang maganda pa dito is that almost all of them are actually, has an initial investment of 1,000 pesos lang po. So with 1,000 pesos, makakabili na kayo ng 30 companies with a mutual fund. Okay. So, balik po tayo sa ating apat na guidelines and now we are now going to the fourth guideline which is to invest regularly. Okay. So, how do we do this? When you go to the stock market, you should have a plan. And the usual strategy can be categorized into two strategies. One is stock trading. This is when you buy and sell at a quicker pace. So, ito po very exciting ito and very advanced. So if you want to do that, I would recommend to attend more advanced seminars about stock trading because it has a higher risk. But what I would be talking in this webinar is the peso cost averaging strategy because this peso cost averaging strategy is best for beginners, for long-term investors because it is very simple and easy to do. So why is it simple? This peso cost averaging strategy only has four things that you have to decide on. And then we just have to keep repeating these four things. 
So this four are, first is to invest a fixed amount. The second is we're gonna invest this in a regular interval. So it can be weekly, monthly, quarterly, or semi-annually over a long period of time, which means again, three, five, 10 years or more. And then in good quality stocks or mutual fund. So my acronym here is called the FROG. Fixed amount, regular interval, over a long period of time in good quality stocks and mutual funds. Okay, so let's do a little example here, okay? Let's say we have a budget of 10 pesos to buy ball pens. Then we're gonna do this for three months. And in the first month, ball pens cost about five pesos each. You can buy two pens with your current budget with a total amount of 10 pesos. Okay, second month, the pens now cost eight pesos per ball pen. How many can we buy? We can buy only one with our 10 peso budget and we spend a total of eight pesos. And then the third month, ball pens again fluctuate in price, naging seven pesos na siya per ball pen. We can buy one pen again with a 10 peso budget and we spend seven pesos. So we have been doing cost averaging in the last three months with a fixed budget of 10 pesos regular interval of every month okay over a long period of time and then we have bought good quality ball pens now the total here is that you have accumulated four pens with a total amount of 25 pesos now i will ask a question and i would also like to put this in a poll how much now did each pen cost you at the end kanina po meron po tayo na accumulate na four pens and ang total spending natin ay 25 pesos for all the four pens, magkano na ngayon ang each ball pen na meron kayo? Okay? So ang choices po natin ay 5 pesos per ball pen, 6 pesos, 6.25, and 7 pesos and 25 cents. Pili lang po kayo, then click the submit button. Okay, so let's see the result of the poll. So 69% says that the cost average or the cost of each pen that you have is six pesos and 25 cents. While there are some who answered seven pesos and 25 and others who had answered six pesos and five cents. So ang tamang sagot po natin dito ay six pesos and 25. At paano po natin to nakuha? It is when 25 pesos, dinivide po natin siya into four for the poor four pens that we have. So here, dito po tayo, paano mag-compute ng cost averaging. Itatali po natin how many stocks that we have purchased over the years and how much we have spent in total for all these stocks. I-divide lang po natin yan para makita natin yung average price na ginastos natin for every stock that we have. And here, with this example, it's 6 pesos and 25. Ang maganda dito is that at 6 pesos and 25, kung ibebenta natin to balik sa store na ngayon ay 7 pesos per ball pen, kikita pa rin tayo about 75 cents for every ball pen that we have. So mapapansin ho natin, we were able to buy more when it's cheap. Less when it's expensive. That's why we were able to get a lower average price. So itong strategy na ito ay pwedeng-pwede gawin para sa stock market. Let me show you how. So here, this is a chart wherein the blue line is the price of the stock, while the yellow line is the average cost. So if the blue line... So here, makipapansin ho natin, the stock price would start at 31 pesos per share. Bumaba ho yan in the next few months at naging 19 pesos per share. Then after ho yan, umakyat siya ulit. So if you're doing peso cost averaging, this is what tells you. Have a fixed amount regularly that you will buy this over a long period of time. 
So, bibili po tayo with a budget. Let's say, 1,000 po ang budget natin at bibili tayo ng 31 pesos. Pag buong ba siya to 29, bibili tayo ulit ng 1,000 pesos. Buong ba siya ng 27, bili lang po tayo ulit. So, if you had done that and you've had kept on buying and accumulating this share, makikita natin na yung average price natin per share bumababa ng bumababa kasi mas marami tayo nabibili when it's cheap. And when it starts to go up again, your average price, which is your yellow line, yan, will remain relatively low. Okay. So, now let's compare this. What if you had bought the stock all in one go rather than doing peso cost averaging. If you had bought it all in one go, you would have put all your money here at 31 pesos. Kikita lang po tayo pag dumating na po dito ang presyo natin, which is 31 pesos and above. Pero pag nagko-cost average po tayo at we were buying this every month, okay, dito pa lang kikita na tayo. Kasi yung average price po ninyo is the yellow line at once the blue line is above that yellow line, kumikita na ng ho kayo. The difference between that is your profit for every share that you have. Yan. So if you're going to do the peso cost averaging, we would recommend that you, that you do it in these stocks or in these mutual funds. Kasi ito pong mga stocks and mutual funds, na pag aral na po namin yan, yung mga research teams po namin, and then they say that these are the companies that had passed the GEMS criteria. They're also good for the long term and really good for peso cost averaging. Here in COL, we call peso cost averaging as Easy Investment Program, or EIP for short. Ito po ang facility na meron tayo sa COL account na should you want to do this, we can automate it in your COL account para lagi-lagi lang po bumibili yung system para sa inyo. Ngayon, usual tanong sa akin yan is, meron bang downside itong peso cost averaging? And for me, the downside to this is really that the peso cost averaging is not the most exciting strategy. The reason is because lagi po tayong bibili to our fixed budget every month. Diba? Yun po lagi lang nating susundan. But the way I see it, that peso cost averaging is like when this is for me, every step matters. This is when the turtle wins the race at the end. Because for every month that we have accumulated, it will amount to a lot in the end. So even though boring po siya, maski na hindi siya ganun ka-exciting, just keep on it. This is a discipline strategy and it will work out for you in the end. Okay. So now that we have discussed the four guidelines, paano po tayo magsisimula? How can we start applying this four? And then how to start investing is really a three-step process then po. But here, this is a lot easier. To start investing, first you have to apply for a COL account. Second is, ipopondo natin tong COL account na to. Whatever money you put into your COL account, that's how much that you can use to spend for your investments. Wala po tayong, wala po tayong fee to open an account. So therefore, you just need to fund it so that you can start investing. And then once you have funded your initial funding, magpapadala po kami ng password sa inyo para ma access nyo na po ang inyong online account. So if you're going to apply, meron po tayong dalawang option. We have the online option and this is actually very new. Nasa preview launch po siya ngayon para sa inyo and this will be open from July 12 all the way to 19. Just go to this link which is signup.callfinancial.com and you can go through it na wala po kayong ipapasang paper sa amin. So this is a development that we have done to make opening an account easier for everyone. Now, the other option will be our Ito po ang option na dati pa ho namin ginagawa and you might want to also do which is a paper application wherein mag-fill out lang po kayo ng customer account information form at ang ating individual disclosure form. And itong dalawa makikita nyo po sa itong link na nasa baba dito which is a bit.ly slash call account opening form complete. So you can download this form, fill it out and then send it to our business center here in Pasig so that we can process this for you. 
Now, once you have applied at na-approvehan kayo na aming mga sales officer, magbibigay po kami sa inyo ng isang COL account number. The COL account number is now what you will use to fund your COL account. You just need a minimum of 1,000 pesos to fund it para ma-open na po kaagad ang inyong COL account. And how are you gonna fund it? Kung nasa overseas po kayo, meron po tayong BDO na straight deposit, meron din po tayong partners with iRemit. The other BDO po, meron din po kami BDO Bills Kabayan na you can do your funding there. Pero kung meron naman po kayong online banking, you may find this more convenient. These are our partnered banks. You just have to enroll us as a merchant or a biller and then you can already start funding your account. So I believe this is a sample of a BDO online banking wherein all you have to do is click on the enrollment para i-enroll po ang COL Financial. And then click nyo po yung pay bills and this is what would appear. Ito po ang inyong bank account detail. Kung ano po ang babayaran ninyong merchant. Here it's COL Financial Group Inc. And then how much money would you like to put in? Just click submit here so that you will have already funded your COL account. And then once you have funded your COL account, pwede na po kayo mag-access sa inyong COL Financial by uh, the email that we have sent you with the password. So ang user ID po ninyo ay yung COL account number po ulit. And then just type in the default password that we will give you, log in, and then ma-access nyo na po ang COL Financial account. So I would also like to take this opportunity through this webinar to actually show you what a COL account looks like. Okay. So once you're able to log in, all you have to do is open a browser. Just type in COL Financial. Mm -hmm. Then magpapasok lang po tayo ng username sa account number. Okay. Here, nakapagbukas na po ako ng isang browser dito at Together, we will navigate this COL account. Uh, I have here a demo account at yung po ang gagamitin ko. So here, just type in your COL account number, then type in your password. Okay. okay. Once you are able to log in, this is what you're going to see and this is your home page. Now, I do know that it's a lot, but don't worry. The home page here is just a summary of everything. Now, once you're able to log in, usual question natin dito is, what's good to buy? Ha? Yun yung usual tanong ng isang investor, ano ang magandang bilhin? To know that, just go to our research tab, go to fundamentals, then click the investment guide para makita po natin ano yung nire-recommend ni Sewell Financial at ano po ang mga fair value ng mga companies na ito. Okay. So once you have seen this, next thing that you have to do is that you have to confirm it with research reports. So go to the archive and then for example, we want to buy BDO. Just type in BDO here on the stock filter, click the search button at makikita nyo na po lahat ng reports about BDO. Let's open one and this is a company report about BDO and it says here, right? Na BDO po, this is the first quarter of 2019 earnings po ni BDO and they have earned 67% higher than 2018 first quarter. So this is very good news okay, about BDO and this can confirm whether a company is growing and earning. Yan. So once you have confirmed through research reports, titignan na ngayon natin magkano siya per share. Okay. And here, we're going to go to the quote section. To type in lang po natin itong stock na ito. Click the quote button, and this is what you will see. Okay. Here, you will see that there will be two columns here, which is the bid column, itong bid column po, at itong asking column. Si bid column po ay naka-green. Si asking ay naka-red. Bid are buyers, asking are sellers. So kung bibili ho tayo, we have to take a look at the seller's column kasi kailangan natin maghanap ng kamatch natin. Here, makikita ho natin na on the very first row, 
this is how we read it. There are 10 investors wanting to buy 32,320 shares at, uh, sorry, they want to sell 32,320 shares at 148 pesos and 20 cents. So if you wanna buy BDO, you can actually put a price of 148 and 20 cents. Kaagad-agad po kayo makakabili dahil meron na pong sellers naghihintay dito para sa inyo. But kung gusto po ninyo tumawad at gusto ninyo maglagay ng mas mababang presyo, then you have to put in a lower price, about 148 or lower. And ang mangyayari dito is that you will fall in line with the other buyers. Maghihintay po kayo for a seller to sell it to you at that price. So wala po siyang guarantee dahil bidding system po ito. So this is price first, then first come, first serve. Now, I also want to show you this part. Makikita po natin sa itong right side, meron po tayong tinatawag na board lot. Itong board lot, nakasulat dito ay 10. So this means that you can buy 10, 20, 30 shares of BDO, but you cannot buy 15, 25, 35. It has to be in multiples of 10. So here, so the initial amount of money that you need to buy BDO is 10 shares at 148 and 20 cents. So roughly, you would need about 1,480 pesos to buy BDO shares. Ayan. So once you have that amount, now you can decide whether to buy or sell it and you can click the buy or sell button. So mamaya papakita ko po sa inyo what a buying order looks like and a selling order. But first, I also like to show na what if gusto nyo naman po bumili ng mutual fund at hindi po stocks. Kung gusto nyo bumili ng mutual fund, punta lang po kayo sa mutual fund tab, bubukas po yan ng bago, and then just click on the research tab ulit. So you don't need to open a new account to buy mutual fund. In one COL account, you can buy both mutual funds and stocks. Here on the research tab, go to the very bottom to see the equity index funds. So these are your four choices. Makikita nyo po kung magkano siya per share. This was uh, yesterday's prices. Kasi sa mutual fund, isang araw, isang presyo lang po siya. Dahil marami po ang laman niya, ang presyo ng mutual fund ay kinakalculate at the end of every day. Then here, you can click on it. You can click on it to buy or sell and to see kung ano po ang historical movement netong fund na ito at kung magkano ang minimum to buy it. Here, makikita natin to sa minimum initial contribution. At for this equity index fund, 1,000 pesos lang po to ang initial purchase. If you want to add more, dadagdag lang po kayo ng 500 pesos minimum. Here sa mutual fund, mapapansin nyo, wala po tayong board lot dito dahil you can actually put there that you want to buy 1,100 pesos worth and what it will do is that it will try to get you as many shares as it can. Kung mag add po kayo, you can actually even put 500 pesos and uh, 500 pesos and let's say 20 pesos, so 520 all in all. Pwede po yun and then it will try to get you again as many shares as it can. Yan. So once you know what stock or mutual fund to buy, okay, papakita ko nyo naman sa inyo paano po to trigger that buying or selling order. Okay. So here, pupunta lang po kayo sa trade tab. Ayan. Okay. I just like to show. Ayan. Okay, hey, so this is what an order entry would look like. And kasi close na po ang market dito sa Philippines. So I have to go back to my slide to show you what an order entry looks like. So here, all you have to do is click the trade tab on top. Yan. And trade would mean that this is all your transaction here. Once you click trade, click enter order. And then here, you just need to fill this out should you want to buy a stock. Okay. Blue is for buying, so color coordinated po yan. At pag kinlik nyo po yung cell, magiging red po itong header na ito. Then you just need to put what stock you want to buy, how many shares, and at what price. 
Sa ilalim po niyan, papakita niya sa iyo kung magkano po ang kailangan ninyong gastusin to buy the shares and this is already calculated with buying fees. Ang fees po to buy stocks is very minimal. It's uh, There's a commission fee of 20 pesos or 0.25%, whichever is higher. And here in this system, it automatically computes for you. If you're gonna sell it, same then po yung fee, pero meron lang po siyang sales tax of 0.6%. So overall, ang fees po to invest in the stock market is roughly about 1.2%. 1, 1 so as long as your stock goes up by 1.2%, kikita na ho kayo. Okay. Now, once you are able to buy, okay, once you are able to buy, this is what it would look like. So here, mapapansin natin na on the trade tab again, punta lang po kayo sa portfolio, papakita ho dito kung magkano na lang ang pera natitira sa inyo, and then ano po yung stock na ibinili ninyo. Here, makikita rin po natin whether we're gaining or losing at automatic na po nagko-compute ito para sa inyo. Para hindi na po kayo mahirapan mag-compute pa ng buying or selling fees. And then kung gusto pa natin ng resibo or monthly statement for us to keep, all you have to do is click on this link and then we update this every day. But I would suggest since every month po ito nako-compile, at the end of every month, just look at it, then you can print it and keep it with you if you like. Yan. So para po siyang monthly statement po when you open a bank account. But doon makikita nyo po lahat ng binili ninyo, binenta ninyo, mga dividends ninyo, at withdrawals or deposit. Kung gusto nyo naman po mag-withdraw, magbilis lang po sa COL Financial. Meron po tayong link dito called Withdrawal Request. So pwede po kayo mag-request online for a withdrawal of your funds. And you can choose whether to pick up a check here in COL Financial sa aming business center sa Pasig or kung meron po kayong Philippine Bank account that accepts a check deposit, pwede po namin gawan yung check sa pangalan ninyo and then deposit it to your bank account. Now, kung bibili naman po kayo ng mutual fund, this is what the order entry would look like. So here, you just need to choose what mutual fund you want to buy and at what amount. So again, Take note of the minimum initial amount and the minimum additional amount. Wag lang po kayo bababa sa itong dalawang halaga. So once you have put that in, just click preview order and it will buy as many shares as it can for you. Once you're able to buy it on the portfolio page ng mutual fund ninyo, makikita nyo rin how many shares that you have managed to buy at what average price and whether you're making or losing money. So, pag green po yan, gain po yan. Pag red, loss po yan. Pero again, pag loss po yan, wag po mag-alala. You can wait for a longer period of time. So, invest for the long term. And what you can do is keep on buying it to make sure that in the end, you have cost average and that will become green again. Okay. So, with that, we have talked about navigating your COL account. So you have seen a sample of what it can do. And also that there are four guidelines that we have discussed so that we will be successful in the stock market investing. So again, it's to invest for the long term. Quality businesses at reasonable prices. Wag po kalimutan i-compare sa fair value po lagi ang presyo ng stock. Diversify po tayo. So wag lang po all in one big go or all in one stock. Maganda po sa iba't iba or you can choose mutual funds. And lastly, to invest regularly using a plan, and I would recommend the peso cost averaging strategy. So with that, kung meron pa kayong any other question, you can type it in your webinar, or you can send us an email at helpdesk at callfinancial.com. And you can even call us at hot, in our hotline should you want to talk to any customer service officer. So now we will be going to a Q&A portion of our webinar and I would like to invite Danes back for the Q&A portion. Okay, thank you Joyce. Uh, you've helped us understand what stocks are and how they work. So let's go to our questions. The first question is how to be a day trader. Oh, uh, how to be a day trader, I would recommend. Please attend as many advanced seminars as you can. And then get the technical 
analysis or the technical strategy that you want to apply. Because technical analysis is all about short-term trading. It looks at the price movement and volume. That would really help you become a day trader. Then to be, let's say, a personal day trader, you can open a CWL account and you can start trading it. You just have to monitor it regularly and always stick to your strategy. Now, uh, should you want naman to become a professional broker, then that's something else. That's a time wherein you have to be employed by a brokerage firm. Goal for your licensure exam with the SEC here in the Philippines. And once you have the license, that's the only time you can talk to investors. Without your license, without being an employee of a brokerage firm, hindi po siya pwede. Okay, and in addition to that, if you uh, go to our YouTube page, yung username po natin, COL Financial on YouTube, we have a recording of our basic technical analysis seminar, and we also have all of the content from our previous trader summits. So there's a lot of information there that you can go through if you want to learn about technical analysis. Okay, let's move on to our second question. Joyce, how can I decide what is a reasonable price when it comes to investing in a company? Okay, so how would you know if it's reasonably priced? Take a look at the fair value, and I like to buy a stock that is about 20 to 30 percent lower than the fair value because that gives me about 20 to 30 upside. Now, should a company stock go up to its fair value, I can make money by selling at the fair value. So always below the fair value, because if it's above, the risk is higher, it's more expensive. So therefore, there's a bigger risk there. Okay, so always remember, check the fair value in the research tab under investment guide, and then take a look at companies that are 20, 30% lower. Then check the research report to see if they're still doing well before buying that company. Okay. Let's go to our next question. Uh, so our next attendee is asking for 100,000 pesos na investment money. How many companies should I invest in? Or should I invest in only one company? Okay, I don't recommend investing in just one company with your whole 100,000 unless it's an equity index fund. Because that's not considered a one company because inside it you have 30 different companies. Hey, okay. so if you're not going to buy mutual fund and you're going to buy a stock with 100,000, you can buy probably about five to six. Just choose the really good ones. Um, choose the ones that would meet the gems criteria. And then that's when you diversify. Don't put it all in one go. So what you can do is that every month you buy two different stocks and then accumulate them until you have finished your 100,000. That way, you get to buy the stock in different prices over time. So if it's going to go down, you manage to buy more when it's cheap. And when it goes up, you don't have to worry because you've already bought some when it was cheaper. Okay, thanks, Joyce. Let's go to our next question. Saan pong tab sa account po makikita ang mga company na pwede kong bilhan ng shares? Oh, so in the quotes tab, meron po tayo doon sa ilalim yon called stock list. In that stock list, it would list down all the registered company and that's about 260 companies registered with the Philippine Stock Exchange. You will see all the company names and their codes and that's the best way to see all your options. But if that's too many, I would recommend going to the investment guide to see the ones that we have studied. Then out of that, what we have studied, get about two to five. And that's what you should focus on. Okay, uh, next question. Can I open an account for my small sister? Uh, they're still students. Okay, for your sister, and if your sister is below 18 years old, I would recommend opening an ITF account. However, this ITF account is only between a parent and a child. So if your sister wants to open, you should have your mom or your dad be the primary account holder. 
and then naka ITF with your sister. But if your sister is above 18 years old, you can do a joint account with your sister, wherein kayo po yung primary, siya yung secondary, or your sister can actually open her own individual online account. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, is there a fee to open a COL account? Uh, there is no fee to open a COL account, so account opening is free. The only fees that COL has is when you buy a stock or when you sell a stock. Among um, Anywhere in between that, there's not a lot of fees. Actually, I'm thinking about it, wala talagang fees yung iba. So it's really when you buy and when you sell. Okay. Uh, next question. How can I get this video to review? Uh, so I'll answer this. We'll be sending a recording of this to all the attendees by email. So check nyo na lang po yung email nyo tonight and you should have a copy. Especially po dun sa mga nagka-problema sa connection nila at baka hindi nyo napanood yung buong webinar. We'll send a copy naman. Uh, next question natin, when is it a good time to invest? Okay, if you're doing peso cost averaging, the earliest that you can invest, the better. Because you're going to do this for a long period of time, so you don't really need to time the market. Now, if you want to do the stock trading strategy, um, the best time to really buy is when the stocks are pretty quiet and it's low but it still has good sentiments about it and it is doing well fundamentally, then that's the time that you buy it. But um, there really is no specific time, like if it's better to buy in the morning or in the afternoon or Mondays or Fridays. Wala po siyang ganun. But uh, for peso cost averaging, the earliest that you can start building your investment, the better. For stock trading, it is when the stock is you know, pretty quiet at the low side, but you know that it can go up if there will be good news about it or if there's good market sentiment about it. All right. Okay, our next question, we get this quite a lot. As a beginner, what will be the recommended number of shares to buy for a particular company? Recommended number of shares for a specific company, it would still depend on your budget and just stay within the board lot. So every company has a board lot. It can range between 10, 100. So um, just buy within that and based on what you can sustain. So if you can only do 2,000 or 3,000 every month, Try to get as many shares as you can within that board lot. For me, of course, I'd rather that you buy more shares over time, but it shouldn't be something that is mandated for you if you have a smaller budget. All right, our next question. How does COL compute the fair value of a company? What is the basis for the fair value? Uh, fair values, this is when a research team would study a company they usually use a method called DCF method. It is a discounted cash flow method, wherein they take a look at all the assets, all the income coming in, then um, they usually divide it by the number of shares and also put a discount on it based on usually what they think should be a discount. But it doesn't apply to all sectors. So usually you need to be a chartered financial analyst to study these companies to come out with fair values. Yeah. But uh, the good thing about fair values, we study not only the past income, but also what we project the future income will be for that company so that it gives you a better idea where this company is going at. All right, let's go to our next question. How much should we add to our investments every month? Well, it still depends on what you can do. But for me, a good amount would already be 1000 every month because the mutual fund just needs 1000 every month to buy it. 
Now, for certain stocks like BDO, you need at least 1,500 every month. So it really is up to you. But based on our computation, um, maybe about 5,000 every month is really a good number already. Uh, and with the 5,000, you can already buy a good number of stock or a good number of mutual funds. If you cannot do that, don't worry. We made it affordable with just 1,000 every month. You can still accumulate. Yeah, and also to add to that, because we also get questions sometimes. Now, what happens pag di ako naglagay every month? So, wala naman yun difference, right? It's just yes. how much you can actually really put over time. Yes. So, unlike um, other industries like the insurance, we don't ask you to put in every month as a specific amount. If you do not put, that means you just did not add on to your investment. And whatever you purchased before will still be there until you sell it. So it's really up to you to continue on with the discipline of adding to your investment. But if you cannot do so, that should be fine. Whatever you purchased before will still be there. And then just add more over the next few months or years. All right, let's go to our next question. It's about mutual funds. Uh, saan daw nakikredit ang dividends for mutual funds? Is it added to the percentage gains? Oh, for dividends of mutual funds, what they do is that they reinvest it into the fund and you'll see that effect when the price of the fund actually increases because of numerous dividends that they get. So unlike stocks that you, may, you might get the dividends straight to your COL account, in mutual funds, it's automatically reinvested. And you will see that when the price of this fund will go up over time. Okay, another question about mutual funds. If I'm going to invest in a mutual fund, where is the best or what is the best fund that I can buy with high ROI, even if it's high risk? Okay, for higher risk, of course, it comes with the higher potential gain. You would want to stick with equity funds or equity index funds. These are funds that are actually invested in the stock market. The other funds of mutual funds would have a lower risk, but of course, lower potential gain as well. So if you are aggressive, go for these two types of funds. But out of the two, I like the equity index more because the equity index just focus on the 30 biggest companies. So at least that manages your risk a little. But you can also choose within the other equity funds. There are a couple there for you to choose from in your COL account. Okay, and then just as a reminder then, so when we say equity fund or equity index fund, it's the same as stock funds and stock index funds. So we use both interchangeably, yung equity and stocks. Uh, going to our next question. So naka-EIP po ako, pero na-stop ko ang pag-fund every month for about a year now. Okay pa ba yun na ipagpatuloy? Yes, you can still continue with it. So what you can do is that you can cancel your previous uh, facility, your EIP schedules. You can create a new one, and then you can fund that moving forward. So there is no penalty for stopping this. It's just that you have not accumulated over that one year. But don't worry, whatever you purchased before will still be there in your COL account. All right. Um, next question, is it okay or advisable to join an organization that will suggest or give you what to buy and what to sell? Okay, for me, I like the organizations wherein you support each other in terms of your investing journey. The communities that I like are those who would really encourage you, tell you not to worry when the stock market is going down, and to actually tell you how to check out if this company is good or not. But whatever they recommend, always double check because not all organizations actually have clear in or very good intentions. So whatever they suggest, take a look at the research, look at their income statements, look at what they're doing. And if that company is good, then that's a good recommendation. But you have to decide ultimately for yourself. Because a lot of us, sometimes it's easier to listen to someone's recommendation. But this is, again, your hard-earned money. I would rather that you know where it's going to go. Well, actually, kung 
wala tayo masyadong time, di mag-index fund na lang tayo. It's kind of the same thing, but at least you're sure that it's 30 stocks. Parang you still know what you're buying to, even though somebody's handling it for you. It's kind of like a better way of doing that, I think. Pwede, um, pwede rin yun. If you don't know what stock to decide, you can always go to the, um, for the mutual funds, the equity index fund. That's really a good choice. You can also mix and match. Actually, what I like to do is that my long-term peso cost averaging is my mutual fund. And then I would see companies that are doing really well and I add on to that. So I have a combination in my investment strategy. I just keep on doing my peso cost averaging for the mutual fund because that's really for long term. But I like to be invested also in companies that I really like. And these are the companies that you will see in your EIP list that I showed you a while ago. You have your Ayalas, your SMs, your uh, you have your MPI, uh, your Gokongwe company. These are really good companies. And sometimes I would like to buy into them. So what I do is that I buy those stocks, add it to my portfolio, so I now have a mix. Okay, so sakto na rin na, nasagot na rin yung next na question, which is, can I buy mutual funds and stocks at the same time? So that's the yes. answer na rin. One thing I like talaga about CUL Financial is that it tries to make it as convenient as possible. One account, you can do all this. You want to be short-term, you want to be long-term. You want to be stocks, you want to be mutual fund, you can do it all in that CUL account. Because this is a very flexible account, it doesn't tell you that this account is only meant for one strategy or one type of investment. It's really yours to create. All right, next question. How long will the online account opening be available? Okay, for, the, for this preview launch, we will open it from July 12, which is today, all the way to July 19. And then uh, later on, we will announce the official launch date of this online application. But because of this webinar, we opened it early because we do know that this is more convenient for a lot of you. And we want to also show you how we are dedicated to making this as convenient as possible as well. All right. Our next question is, ano mas magandang mutual fund? Sun Life Prosperity Equity Fund or the Index Fund? Sun Life Prosperity Equity Fund? Equity Fund, okay. yes. Um, okay, uh, I cannot show you here on this webinar. However, in the mutual fund page, there's a, on the research tab, you will see there the one, three, and five-year performance of this fund. This is how I gauge which fund actually performed better in the last few years. So there... Whoever has a better number in terms of their performance in the last three, five years, that's the better fund for me. Now, the only advantage I can see that equity index fund may have is that um, it is more curated. It is only within the 30 biggest, most traded companies. So therefore, it has a bit of guard for you that moving forward, you will always be invested in what we call blue chip stocks. Huh? Blue chip is because it's highly valued. And for me, that's a big deal because it manages your risk. Other equity fund, equity fund managers have the prerogative to choose what investment they want to put into it. So for me, take a look at the three to five year performance. Whichever did better, that's a better fund for you. All right, next question po natin. Somebody from Saudi, nagtatanong siya, pwede po bang mag-invest ng 100,000 pesos one time sa mutual fund, pero hindi ko siya dadagdagan? Kikita po ba ang investment ko? Your investment can make money as long as the price of that mutual fund will go up over time. Now, what for me is the downside to putting all in one go is that if the mutual fund now, let's say, is at 6 pesos per share, you are stuck with that price. So if this mutual fund goes down 6 pesos, you're not able to buy. If it goes up, then you, you will always gauge it with the 6 pesos that you've bought it at. So for me, you can do it. It's just that you are locking yourself to one price the whole time. So I'd rather, why don't you do 10,000 every month for 10 months? 
So at least you get to buy more when it's cheap. You're done in 10 months. You've, you've done, uh, you've invested the whole amount. And then the good thing about that, you've done a little bit of peso cost averaging, but still investing the whole amount in mutual funds. Pero Joyce, hindi naman to kailangan exactly every month. So kung gusto niyang mas mabilis, pwedeng twice a month, ganun, para it goes faster. Kasi it's a lot of time then for your money to not be invested. Pwede rin ng ganun. But the thing is, the more money, that the lesser time that you put in, you will only have five different prices in the end mm. that you have cost average. So for me, tranches of it will always be better. But kunyari, kung nagmamadali po kayo, gusto niyo lang po siya invest lahat, pwede naman po. It's just that, again, you're locking yourself up to the price of what you have gotten. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to our next question. Would you recommend stock day trading to someone with day-to-day office work? Well, I don't recommend day trading for someone who has a full-time job because with day trading, within a day, a stock can go up and down and the maximum that the PSE said is about 50%. So if you are not monitoring your stocks very well, within a day, it can literally change what you have, your equity, and your strategy as well. For example, if the stock is going up and that's why you bought into it, let's say you have bought it, And then you went to work and you are expecting this to go up further. But what if the day that you went to work, it went down? It went down so much that you think it's not going to go up anymore. As a day trader, if you're watching it carefully, you will have that flexibility to sell it immediately to cut your losses. But if you you have a full-time job, you will have a harder time because you will have to react the next day. So I don't really recommend... um, a day trading type for somebody who has a full-time job. Um, but what you can do is you if you have a full-time job but you don't want such a long-term or pencil cost averaging, then I would suggest maybe following the investment guide. It won't be such a – it's not a day trading type. It's more of medium term. Wherein you buy something at the buy below price, then sell it at the fair value price. So at least that way, it's not too long a term, but it's not too risky for you as well, especially since you cannot monitor this every day. Okay, next question. Is it true that in mutual funds, there is also an amount you have to pay to the ones managing your account? Okay, so with every mutual fund, the prices or the fees of the fund manager is actually computed inside the price of the mutual fund already. So think of it like you go to a restaurant and the restaurant's price already includes service fees and VAT taxes. That way, um, you don't actually get to feel the fees because it's already computed inside. But at the same time, Um, this way your full amount of money will actually get invested because they won't take out the fees yet before they invest it for you. So with mutual funds, there is a management fee. It is computed inside the price, unlike a stock wherein it's really on the just the buying and the selling part. Um, So for you to know what the management fee of a mutual fund, Again, on the investment portion of the mutual fund page, you will see there a column called management fee. So the lower the fee, the better it will be. Okay, so in relation to that, what is better between a mutual fund or a UITF? Okay, so I believe a UITF, this is a bank product that is very similar to a mutual fund. Now, for me, the two are very similar. The only difference will probably be what's the investment inside it, who is your fund manager, as well as the governing body who is watching over it. For me, very similar. It's just that with UITF, maybe it depends on whether it's very transparent for you, if you are able to buy and sell it quicker. With mutual funds here with COL, you can do that. But for me, they are very similar. So what you can take a look at is the fees, which one has a lower fee for you, and which one is more convenient or more liquid for you as well. So those are probably the things that you can take a look at. But in terms of 
how it is done, UITF and mutual funds, they're very similar. Okay, going to our next question. Uh, what will happen to the investment money if the company I invested in will close or become bankrupt? Okay, so companies who, uh, who will be closing or what they call uh, delisting, they will take themselves out from the PSE. The usual protocol is that the companies would buy back the shares from the customers first. So they'll, they do what they call a tender offer. They usually buy it back before they deregister or delist themselves from the Philippine Stock Exchange. So that's the best way to get out from that company that will not be traded anymore. But let's say you are not able to do the tender offer, then what will happen in the end is that if the company will take themselves out from the PSE, you can convert your shares into stock certificates and then you can hold on to it. So you will be a shareholder of that company until that company buys it back from you. So for me, uh, if a company will do a tender offer, remember this is when a company would like to buy back their share. If it's a company that will delist, I would really recommend to do the tender offer or sell the share in the market. The good thing about the stock market is that it's very liquid. You can buy and sell every day in the market. So if you don't like that company anymore, if you think that the company is not doing well, just sell it in the market and then it's already converted to cash. Okay, uh, our next question, Miss Joyce, OFW po ako dito sa Saudi. Gusto kong mag-invest, pero hindi ko kaya siyang i-monitor kasi nasa remote area ako. Most of the time, wala akong internet. Ano ang recommendation ninyo? Okay, my recommendation would be, in our COL account, we have what we call an EIP facility, the Easy Investment Program. In this facility, you can actually schedule an automatic buy for you at the interval that you set it at. So sort of like a smart uh, feature of your COL account. You can find it under the trade tab under the EIP. So what you can do is that once you have internet access, you can put there how much money that you want to spend for this stock every month and to automatically buy for you. The good thing about this is that you can set this up to three years. So all you have to do is to put money into this account and the system will buy it for you. So this one, this is more of a, it really helps you do your peso cost averaging. It automatically buys for you as long as you have money. But if you don't have money anymore, then it will just stop the automatic buying. But, and it will buy again once you put money in. So that would be my best suggestion since you have limited internet access. Okay, uh, we just have time for two more questions, pero wag po kayo mag -alala. We will still answer all of the questions by chat later. Even after matapos na po yung webinar, we'll still answer them. So for our last two questions, uh, what is the difference between the equity fund and equity index fund? Equity fund would mean that you are invested in stock. But any stock that within the 260 that is registered with the Philippine Stock Exchange. Equity index fund would mean that you have only purchased what is inside the PSE index, which is the 30 biggest most traded fund. So those are the only difference. All right, and for our last question, for a person planning to retire in 15 years, what is your recommendation? For 15 year investment, my recommendation is your equity index fund. So majority of your money would be there. And then the rest, what you can do is that you can add on to some of the shares that you like, but you can focus more on your equity index fund since you have a specific timeline of when you will liquidate this so that you can use it already for your retirement. Okay, I'm afraid that's all the time that we have for the questions. But again, we will answer all of the unanswered questions. And then kung meron pa po kayong additional, you can also still email us at helpdesk at clfinancial.com. So we'll send the presentation slides by email. You can check your email tonight. We'll also send our survey. It's a very short survey. If you're happy with our webinar or if you have some suggestions, we encourage you to answer the survey. We'd also like to invite you to follow us on our official channels online. 
We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So we post a lot of investing-related content, personal finance tips, and we also have event recaps. Uh, okay, Joyce, uh, do you have any final words before we end today's webinar? I would just like to thank everyone for being great participants in this webinar. I hope you learned a lot, and I wish you good luck in your investing journey. So, Danes, now I give it back to you. Okay. So, um, okay. Thank you, everyone, and happy investing.